Hey you guys and welcome back to yet another video. In today's video we are focusing on module 3 lesson 24 where we are going to expand our knowledge of factor pairs and also learn about a new word, a new vocabulary phrase. This vocabulary phrase y'all is called multiples. That's right, multiples. So now we know factors and today we're going to learn about multiples. Here's something that can help you remember the difference between the two. When you think of factors, think of a ninja. And ninjas chop and slice numbers to make them smaller. For example, I can chop the number 6 into 1 and 6. I can also chop the number 6 into 2 and 3. And I can multiply those numbers together to get my product. Whereas multiples, I want you to think of a monster. Ooh, I guess that kind of is the sound that a ghost would make. You get the point. I want you to think of a monster. And monsters scare numbers into making them bigger. The monster is a big bully, y'all. This monster is going to scare numbers to make them bigger. So factors make numbers smaller. Whereas multiples make numbers bigger. For example, when you are finding a multiple of a number, you're going to skip count. Like a bunny, you're going to skip count. For example, the multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so on. I'm skip counting to make the number 7 bigger. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like in a problem. First, we're going to review how to find factors. It says find the factors of the following numbers. Determine if the number is prime or composite. We're going to do this to review what we learned in our previous lesson or in lesson 22. The first one was done for us. Let's do E together. In the number six, I can slice those numbers or chop those numbers like a ninja. And remember, we're always starting with our smallest number we can think of. Do you remember our smallest number? Yes, we're going to start with 1. All right, 1 times blank equals 6. So smart. 1 times 6 equals 6. All right, y'all, what number comes after 1? And I promise it's not a trick question. Uh, yeah, 2. Let's think for a second. Can I multiply 2 by something to get the number 6? I can. What can I multiply 2 by? Good. 2 times 3 equals 6. All right, y'all. Remember, our factors need to go from least to greatest. So we're going to find our smallest number, and it's going to go here. And our largest number is going to go all the way at the end. Our numbers are 1, 6, 2, and 3. We need to order them from least to greatest. What number is going first? Good, one. And what number is going after that? Good, two. Then what comes next? Good, three. And then what comes last? If you said six, you were absolutely correct. Now it's time to figure out if this number is prime or composite. Let's think for a second. Remember, prime means it only has two factors. Well, we found one, two, three, four factors. So we know it's not prime, so it means it is composite. That's right. And y'all, we forgot to do the same thing for part D. Even though Ms. Turner did part D for us, we have one, two, three factors here for part D, for the number four. So is number four prime or composite? Uh, yeah, it's composite because we have more than two factors. Let's do uh, part F together. Our magic number this time is 13. Remind Ms. Turner, what number do we always start with when we're writing our multiplication sentences? That's right, one. One times blank equals 13, y'all. Uh, yeah, 1 times 13 equals 13. 
Let's go ahead and put our numbers in order from least to greatest. What number is coming first? Good. And what's our second number? 13. You'll notice, y'all, that the reason why there's only one multiplication sentence here is because I cannot multiply two numbers and get 13 other than 1 times 13. I can't multiply 2 times something. I can't multiply 3 times something. There's no other multiplication sentence. So I only have two factors, prime or composite. What do you think? Uh, yeah, prime. There's only two factors, y'all. All right, thanks for working with me as we reviewed on how to find uh, factors and determine if a number is prime or composite. We are going to skip over to slide seven because now we're going to scare our numbers to make them bigger. So on slide six, we chop them up to make them smaller. Now we're going to scare them to make them bigger. That's right, y'all. We are going to be finding multiples. Remember, when we're finding multiples, we are skip counting like a bunny. Let's go ahead and start with part A. The number that we're going to be finding multiples for is 9. Can you skip count with me? What number is going to come after 9? If I'm skip counting, if I'm counting by 9s. If you said 18, you are absolutely correct. The next one was done for us. So we have 9, 18, 27. What comes next? <laughs> That's right, 36. What comes after that? We're going to keep skip counting. Uh, yeah, 45. What comes after that? Keep counting by nines. If you said 54, you are absolutely correct. What comes after that? If y'all need to, pause the video, and then when you have the answer, just unpause it. <laughs> That's right, 63. What comes after 63? We're still skip counting by nine. So all you're doing is just adding 9 to the number before it. <laughs> did you get 72? If you did, you're absolutely correct. Add 9 more. What do we get? Yeah, 81. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for part B. Remember, we are skip counting. We're finding multiples starting with 4. What comes next? Good, eight. The next one was done for us, so we have four, eight, 12. What comes after 12? 16, keep going. 20, keep going. 24, keep going. 28, good. The next one was done for us. We have 32. Keep going. Add four more to 32, y'all. What do we get? Good. 36. Keep going. 36. Good. Ending it with 40. All right, y'all. Two more. Here we go. Skip count by 6. We have 6, 12. What comes next? Add 6 more to 12. What do we get? Good. 18. Keep going. Add 6 more. Good. 24. Keep going. Good, 30, keep going, add six more. 36, all right, the next one was done for us. We have 42, add six more to 42. Good, keep going. Fabulous, 54. 
All right, you guys, let's do part D, 11. So we're going to be finding multiples of 11. 11. Add 11 more, what do we get? Good, 22. The next one was done for us, 33. Add 11 more. Good, 44, keep going. 55, good, keep going. Good, 66. Add 11 more. 77, good, keep going. Good, 88. And our last one. 99, fabulous job. Y'all, we just figured out the multiples of 9, 4, 6, and 11. Good job, y'all. Now let's combine this knowledge. Let's combine our knowledge of factors and multiples. Let's go to slide 9. On slide 9, we're going to be using our multiplication facts and our knowledge about how to multiply in order to figure out if a number is a multiple and if that same number is a factor. All right? I'll show you what I mean. Let's do part A. The question is, is 12 a multiple of 4? Well, before we can answer this question, let's first figure out our multiples of 4. We're going to skip count by 4. Let's fill in those blanks. 4. What comes after 4? Good. 8. The next one was done for us. We have 12. Add 4 more. Good, 16, and add four more to that. Fabulous, 20. Let's look, do we see 12 anywhere in our skip counting? You do? I do too, right here. So is 12 a multiple of four? When I skip count by four, do I have 12 anywhere in my pattern? Uh, yes. So that means that, oop, that means that 12 is in fact a multiple of 4. Yes, it is. Let's go ahead and see if 4 is a factor of 12. Remember, when we're finding factors, we are chopping those numbers to make them smaller. So we are going to figure out all of our factor pairs for the number 12. Here we go. 1 times blank equals 12. Uh, yeah, 1 times 12 equals 12. What number comes after 1? <laughs> That's right, 2. Can I multiply 2 by something and get 12? If you need to, pause the video until you figure it out. If you said I can multiply 2 by 6 and get 12, you are absolutely correct. What number comes after 2 that we can try? Yes, 3. Can I multiply 3 by a number to get 12? I can? Well, what can I multiply 3 by? 4. Good job. All right, let's see. We just found all of our factor pairs for the number 12. Do we see 4 anywhere in our multiplication sentences? We do? I see it too, right here. So that means that 4 is a factor of 12. Let's go ahead and put yes in our blank. All right, friends, let's do one more of these. Let's do part B, and then you guys can pause the video and do part C on your own. All right, here we go. Is 42 a multiple of eight? Hmm, well, remember, multiple means we are skip counting. We're scaring those numbers to make them bigger. So let's skip count by eight. Here we go, eight. What comes after eight? 16. All right, 24 was filled in for us. Add eight more. Good, 32, add eight more to 32. 
Good, 40. And add 8 more to 40. Oh, that last one was easy peasy, 48. All right, let's think for a second. Do we see the number 8 anywhere? I'm sorry, not the number 8. Do we see 42 anywhere in our following numbers? We just skip counted by 8. Do we see 42, this number right here, anywhere? No, we don't see 42. And in fact, y'all, we went over the number 42. We, we moved from 40 to 48. So is 42 a multiple of 8? Do we see it below? No, so it's not a multiple of 8. Let's go ahead and find the factors of 42. We're trying to see if 8 is a factor of 42. Remember, factors means we are chopping those numbers to make them smaller. Remember, our magic number is 42. 1 times blank equals 42. Who thinks they know the answer? Uh, yeah, 1 times 42 is 42, y'all. What number comes after 1? Yes, 2. Can I multiply 2 by something and get 42? Pause the video and see if I can do it. I can. I can multiply 2 by 21 and get 42. What comes after 2? 3. Can I multiply 3 by a number and get 42? Pause the video and see. I can. I can multiply 3 times 14 and get 42. All right. And our next one, they gave us they gave us one of the numbers, 6. What can I multiply 6 by to get to 42? Hmm. What do you think? If you said 7, you are absolutely correct. Now let's look. Remember, we're seeing if 8 is a factor of 42. Do we see 8 anywhere in any of our multiplication sentences? No, so 8 is not a factor of 42. All right, y'all, for extra practice, here's what I want y'all to do. I want you to grab your another sheet of paper, and I want you to do Part C on your own. Make sure you're paying careful attention to make sure you are getting all of your facts down on your paper. Until next time, you guys, see you later.